99. 100! There you go. There we go. Hello and welcome to We're Not Wizards, the 100th episode, kind of. <laughs> I thought we were only doing three. That's what... <laughs> That's what that you roped into. Well, that's the contract that you signed, but you didn't sign in the small print. Uh, my name's Richard, and joining me is, is gone. Is gone. <laughs> it's been far too long. Um, Do you mean it's it's? It's not been that long at all, is it? It's just that I keep putting out these stupid number of episodes. I'm going to shift the the mic slightly and put my show notes. Somewhere else, because this is a li- it's not a live episode. It's live as we're recording it, as opposed to pre-recording it and going back with a kind of a nonsense. How mm. are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm very good. Happy birthday! Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Do you know what? There's a previous episode where it was also your birthday as well. Is there? Yeah. Oh dear. Can't God. remember which episode it is, but there's definitely an episode where it's like it's your birthday. Nice. So it's like you know, it's almost like a yearly thing. <laughs> it it, yes. yeah. It's almost like a year since we like get a spoke and mentioned it's your birthday. It's about, about once a year, your, it's your co-host almost, actually it, turns up. It was, <laughs> no, it was like no, 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 no. That's not talk. Um, that's been like twelve months since the last time you had a birthday. Yeah, yeah it's been un- about that. It's uncanny. Right, totally. It's almost like it's a regular. It's a regular thing. I'll try and keep it down to once a year. I, I think otherwise you get a bit tired. Aye, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, for those who are. Jo- Joining us for the first time. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, settle down. I hope you have a nice cuppa. Well, you've certainly got... I've got a nice cuppa. Have you got water, will you? I do have water. Yes, and I did have some ginger snaps. But I've eaten them all. Oh, no! Um, The reason that we do this is because there are quite simply not enough podcasts out there about board games. No board game podcasts. No. And the other reason, very few, you know, middle-aged white chaps talking about <laughs> special interest topics. Well, you're middle-aged now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, before it was the middle-aged one uh, and the younger one, and now you officially you officially join our ranks. So. Have I grown so old? <laughs> I've got your cardi. Do you like it? No. Uh, yes. Was it comfy? Yeah. Where's my flat cap? I've uh, also got your pipe and some slippers. Oh. Which is going to weird because you're just not going to fit in if you're kind of wearing that stuff. Um, and the other reason that we do this is because um, it's a mm. hundredth episode, so there's no way I'm going to do a show and not have Colin on it. It's as simple as that. Okay. Do you know what I mean? He couldn't get any better guests. I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> run out of guests. We've done all of the, all of the available guests. Do you know what I mean? So you know, after we did, um, you know, after we had Graham on. Or Graham's going to be coming on. Yeah, um, it kind of just well went dry. Mm-hmm. I can't, there's not, not an awful lot more we can say. Um, so I guess we better kind of jump in with kind of what we've actually got to the table. and Nothing. Absolutely, absolutely nothing. Simply nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> what have we been playing? Um, I have... A couple of weeks ago, I played around with a bit of Quantum, mm-hmm. which is... I did a... look over it. You you standing there with spherical dice in your hand. I was very, very... I was very pleasantly surprised. Or cupular dice. It would be stupid if they were spherical. Because it would just roll over the table. Yeah. That would be a D100, wouldn't it? A mm. weighted D100? Is there such... There is, a, yeah, is there, there is. a D100? There's D100s. I'm just shows my... They, they look stupid, so everyone just uses two D10s. Oh, okay. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. No. So yeah. So quantum is a game about taking over planets and using dice in order to take over the planets mm-hmm. and place Ish. a little marker yep. in the middle of the planets. Mm-hmm. And every face of the dice is obviously a number, mm-hmm. but that number represents six-sided dice. Six-sided, yeah, d six. <laughs> See how technical I am now. Woo-hoo. I know it's a hundred shows. Just check out my technicalities. Um, and the idea is that when you roll the dice, you allow you to do different different things. Mm-hmm. So um, it gives basically it gives your dice that particular ship's power. Yeah, well, but you initially roll the dice, and then that dice becomes that ship. Mm-hmm. So 
if, if just off the top of my head, one is like the battle space, station. It's like a space station. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, can it, think more of like a Death Star than a. Yeah, yeah. It kind of moves yeah. one space, mm. but it's very, very good at kind of like yep. kicking people's butts. And then there is the um, the ships that allow you to change from one ship from one one ship to mm-hmm. another. Yep. Um, you've got the number three, which is almost like a warp type ship, which yep. allows you to yep. swap places with another one. Mm-hmm. Um, so the nice thing is that each of these each of these ships has got the um, has got the ability to uh, to have different skills, and the idea is that you're meant to get. Um, each of the you've got each of these lovely planets, and each of the planets has a number value. Mm-hmm. And in order for you to get around to take over a planet, you've got to equal yep. the number. Which with, means, with your ships, you can't yeah. be over it, can't be under it. You, you can't be through have it. The exact number. You can't be yeah. next to it. You got to be on the nose. Mm-hmm. And if you're on the nose, you get to take a little cube. You get to put it on the planet. Mm. You get to claim it as part of yours. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to get so many cubes on so many planets. And then or, you kind of win the game. Well, there's other ways to win, though. Yeah, are there? Cause yes, well, you, you can do the... Um, well, when you go into combat, you, you can win. Oh. Um, is it domination? Yes. Or? Yes, you've got to get And like... then you can convert domination points into victory points. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can win that way. Yeah. And then to make the game replayable, so there's lots and lots of replayability in this game, there is um, special cards that you can purchase yes. through the game. Yes. And they all give you a, a new ability, like um, you don't lose your ship if you lose combat and, and things like that, which all quite you know, makes the game have masses of replayability and the other thing is as well is that the you're not laying out like a game board no 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 you're laying out each of the planets is on like a tile which is about say it's probably about maybe eight or nine ten centimeters by ten centimeters yeah about that yeah yeah they're not that big but you can put the tiles into different configurations Mm -hmm. so you can just have them as a three by three Yep. And have a basic yeah. field, but it gives you the option. You get quite a lot of different tiles in the box, yep. and it gives you the option to put it like a diamond shape, or put it like a T shape, or mm-hmm. put it like an X shape, or put it. You, you can basically throw it down however you want, and then that means that you've got different ways that you have to travel in order to get mm-hmm. about, in order to kind of yep. hit the planets. The good thing is that you've got the option to um, put put action points into increasing like research yes yeah. and then once you get a research it gives you like a card mm-hmm. and your cards are either they're down into two things you're either um you either got something that the effect happens straight away yep instance or um, yeah um or you've got um per- permanent changes yeah. to your faction yeah you put them at the side and then they have a definite effect. So one of them might be that when you're rolling and when you're rolling into battle, all your ships are always equal to to three in terms of their in terms of their additional mm-hmm. attack. Or it's a card that says when you go into battle, you can force your opponent to re-roll yeah. their dice again. So he he might have rolled a ones. Yeah, and then you can go no no, re-roll that. Yeah, yeah I think because. <laughs> And this is where I'm going to either sound like I've remembered or my old, old <laughs> middle-aged brain has forgotten. Is it in combat? It's the lower person It's, it's the wins. lowest number wins. So that's why the battle station, because one yes. um, is the best ship he's a in, 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 your, in your close combat. He's a he's gonna kick, He's going to kick butt. Yeah. And he's not got the, um, the exhaust ports. No, no. Which is good. It is good. You don't good. want to be beaten by no sixes. Absolutely, but they're the they're kind of they're kind of quite flighty little kind of. Ships. Well, they're scout ships, and, yeah. and and they can move up to six, so they can zip round the the player mat if if you needed them to. You um, don't need that nonsense. No, I was watching something today about you. Remember, the, there's these um, things on YouTube about how certain films should ended. 
Mm, I think so. And they have like cartoon variations of how like Return of the Jedi should end it. Ah. And they've got the Emperor turning up and he's saying, Are you tell it tell it like make sure yeah. see when we did the last Death Star, yeah, you had an exhaust port that was big enough to fit some missiles down it. <laughs> tell me this time that you've put grates over the top or something that they can't bomb it says, No, no, what we've decided to do is we've decided to Yeah, we've got rid of that completely. There's no exhaust ports. But instead, there are two big channels which are big enough so an entire starship can fly and actually get to the main reactor instead. Ah, but you know... <laughs> with the survival power of this no, no. operational battle, battle station, station, because it's being constructed at the time. I know! So they need to do that. independent contractors. It's like an access way, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like the dirt road going into the housing state. You know, you're obviously going to get access to the main reactor mm-hmm. if you go down that. It depends. Maybe it was Bellway that built it. Well, you, I thought you were going to say, you know, like, you know, Denise all like, you know, like, no, join the dark side look. And looks all like, all right, go on then. Yeah, but crack, crack on <laughs> fine, with that. Fine, Or the one about when they go to Jabba's palace and they, like, throw a thermal detonator in. Leia just goes in and starts chucking thermal detonators <sighs> about. Just kills Jabba. And it looks like, I was going to go for a really elaborate plan. It's like, no. No, mate. Well, it's a thermal detonator. And your hands already in Krypton. E- e- not carbonite. Carbonite. Kryptonite. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> That's a completely different Woof. film. Woof. Wrecked it there. Um, How many franchises can we get sued by? <laughs> uh, as many as, as... Well, we know. I mean, we're an established... And this of... is all in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> With Spock. <laughs> Saying the force is strong in this one. Um... <laughs> So, Quantum, it's good fun. It was really, really easy to learn. I mm-hmm. had a good time with it. Um, we lost. I lost spectacular. You oh, lost, then, did you? Well, I lost enough. I wasn't the first person it's, to get it, to the planet. That's another thing to mention about the game. It's it's blisteringly fast. You yes. can rattle through a game in 45 minutes. Yeah. An hour. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's with five players. Once you uh, get four used players. It's, yeah. it's four players, isn't it? We had five, I think we tried. It does yeah. go up to five. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. It was good fun. You know, it was a good fun. It was a good game. It was enjoyable. Would I play it again? Yes, I would. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and we'll obviously we'll stick a little note in the um in the show notes. Um have you been playing anything recently? Uh yes, but Tell me. Um I've been playing a lot of Star Realms with you. Uh, who, who you, with me? With you. And which version of Star Realms have we been playing? Um, the base set, mainly. We have, and we've been playing both card, and we have also been tripping into the apps mm. stuff. And we were. And do you know, I've actually come to the conclusion, I prefer the app over the physical. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, seriously. Can I just say something? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'll tell you what... <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have a little story. Is it me and my son mm-hmm. are sitting there playing Star Realms? Yep. And he went, You've got this on your phone? And I was like, Yeah, I do have this on my phone. Should we do a pass and play version instead? And I was like, No, we stick to the cardboard because we're not going down the app route. And do you know, in second, and we did. And do you know, the worst thing about it mm-hmm. was remembering trying to subtract numbers when. <laughs> Switching the cards around to remember how many kind of how yep. many points you had left, yeah. but also having to meticulously go through the cards and figure out when you were using the same faction and you got like the double points mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that was quite that was quite uh, so I'm, I'm interesting. Normally or, have we talked about Star Realms? We before? didn't. We were going to speak about Star Realms last time, but we said we were going to save it for this. Ah, right, we're going to save okay. it for this particular shoe. Right, so, so what is Star Realms? Star Realms is a tactical card game, which is a deck building game. Deck building, yep. In which you and me go up against each other. And head to head. Nine, only only two player game, unfortunately. One, um, I have seen people try and there play There is them weird variants, yeah. but from what I've heard it doesn't. Work. No, because he always although had, yeah, they've okay. got a Kickstarter out just now, yes. or it's just ended. It's just finished, yeah. Um, called Frontiers, yes. which is to turn it, the game into a four-player. 
Yes, which I'm again. I'm interested to see how that kind of works. The idea behind Star Realms is quite simple: is that you start off with a really rubbish set of yep. uh, cards. You start with eight cards that only give you money one th- money yes. each, and, and two, two cards, cards which allow you to that do fight. one damage. Yes. Yeah. And the idea of the game is to basically is to buy more superior cards, mm-hmm. which allow you to do more damage, or increase the amount of money that you've got, or increase the amount of authority that you've got. Because you don't start off with, ooh. so you don't start off with authority. Um, no, so you don't start off with life points. You start off with authority. Yes, yeah, which so is basically it's life. life points. It's, life. it's, like, it's even you know, green. Come it's, on, it's, you know exactly. <laughs> you know you, you automatically call it life. But I've got you took fifteen life points off me with that. You're gonna call it life points, no matter which way you kind of look at it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then there is five cards put down in the middle, mm-hmm. and first person gets three cards. Yes. And second person gets five cards. And then after the first round, the first player gets five cards as well. Yes. It's just because it's such a tremendous advantage going first. Yes, it is. Because you see those first five cards. And then you can just go ahead. You, you, you know, if you got a full starting hand of five, you would be at such an advantage. You would always win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whereas so- starting with just the three, it limits on what you can buy. You can get, you can get. Sometimes you can get lucky. You very, yeah. You can get very, very lucky. Um, it's how they they've they've kind of kept it simple because unlike say, well, I guess I, I like most kind of deck building games, you have factions. Mm-hmm. But what they've done with Star Realms is, and especially in the base game, they've kept it kind of elegant to the number of kind of factions that there are. Yeah. Colin knows the name of the factions over a bit. Look, don't stare at me like that. He's like that. What? <laughs> You're dropping uh, me at it. The, um, You've got the red guys. That's the machine boys. Machine cults, yeah. And what they do is they basically allow you to scrap hands, well, the, scrap cards in your deck. They have a few cards which are damaging, yes. a few cards which are um, allow you to use everyone else's abilities. Yes. And but the main thing with their faction is that being able to remove a card from the game. Yes, which is very very important because unlike so, a lot of deck yeah. building things, where you're wanting to try to build up a really big deck, this allows you to streamline yeah, your deck. It takes those starting cards out of your your yeah. your deck of cards, which makes your deck of cards average out to be a better hand each time you draw your hand. Absolutely. Um, till the point where you've got rid of all the base cards and then you're just laying down, you're just laying down the cards you've bought, which you're just are normally a lot better cards. It's just pain. Yeah. Have some pain. Have some more pain cards. Mm. There is a point, obviously, that you don't want to maybe not go all red cards. No, because they're quite low damage. Yes. So you'll be end up with a very, very lean deck, but you'll end up to the point where you can't scale you don't really want to scrap anything else in your hand yeah. because you're just scrapping kind of yeah. nonsense. Then you've got the yellow boys. The yellow ones, they are the Imperium. I think they are the Imperium. But, you know, other other yellow faction names are available, basically. If, if you want, you know, it's, it's your show, Richard. <laughs> it's not my show. Don't, don't let this on me. Um, <laughs> But basically, the guys in the yellow, they have yep. a thing where what they what they like to do is they like to make the other player discard the, Their hands. big thing is is going down the force your opponent to discard a card. Yes. And also drawing cards is their big yes. thing. Yes. Um, because once you draw your five, what, every time you're playing, you're drawing five just, cards. Yeah. Just like the machine cult with it's removing a card from the game. Yeah. Having cards which allow you to draw cards means you cycle through your deck faster. So that mm. means you get you get the cards you've just bought into your deck faster. Because when you buy a card, it doesn't go into your hand. And no. It doesn't go into you, you, your um, your deck. No. It goes into your discard pile. Yes. So it's not until you've completely gone through your deck that cards you've bought then are added back in. Yeah. 
Which is why the yellow guys are so powerful, because what they're doing is if you're forcing somebody to discard hands back into their discard pile, it's going to take them longer to yeah. get through their deck again. Basically, they're not they're not allowed they're not enjoying they're not enjoying the use of the cards, um, which is a bit you know, which is how it, how it plays. Um, then you've got your blue guys. It's the federation. The federation, the good old federation. And they, they are the only faction in the game where you get authority back. Yes. Yes, which... Um, which they, makes them important to pick up as well. Yes, <laughs> it allows you basically to almost um, defend yourself um, mm-hmm. as required. So you um, you can... Usually it's a mixture between allowing you to either gain authority or attack, or gain authority and gain some extra resources that you can buy cards. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can... So you get a choice. You can string... You, you They allow you to get to the point where you're maybe... You're going back above the 50 points. You can actually go back above the 50 points as well. Yes. So yeah, you can build yeah. your hand up. So your guy could be sitting there. Yes, he's able to take damage, but he's able to take a lot more damage because yep. within the next couple of turns... He's putting himself a back up by a two or three points. A game I was playing with a poor chap, and by the time I beat him, I was up at like seventy eight life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this, this is, is so this is nasty. <laughs> I know I can't help it. And um, <laughs> our final boys are the blobs. Yep, they're blobby because they're probably the only organic type. Ships they're they're all they're... organic typey ships. Yeah, yeah so. and they they rain down with the. Pretty much the Hellfire. They are a lot of them. They are they're your hard attack. hitting yeah. cards. They're Most the, of their stuff is all high damage. Yeah. Or scrapping things from the the five cards to buy, yes. which is a great way to deny yes. your opponent if you see he's gone for a particular fashion. Yeah. And you have these cards that allow you to scrap the communal cards. Yeah. Um, you can go. All right, he's buying. He's, he's buying all yellows. Yeah, I'll just destroy that out. yellow card. Yeah, that's he can't buy the yellow card that's now. You've got two types of cards as well. Mm-hmm. You've got your fighters, what they call, and then you've got your base. Is it base? They are called bases, aren't they? Oh yeah, base stations. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what happens is that your fighters will sit in your. You'll play your fighters kind of there and then. Well, it's mainly just ships, really. Yeah, ships, that yeah. they're called. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll get your bases that you play. And bases stay. Yes. Uh, at the end of your turn, a base will stay out. Yes. And then there's two types of base that you have. Yes, and what are those? Um, they're the ones with grey shields and ones with black shields. Yes. If it's got the black shield, yes. it means when your opponent does damage to you, mm-hmm. he's got to attack the stations first. Yes. And if it's got a grey a gray shield, sorry, yeah. I was nearly going to say green there for some unknown oh, reason. Um, just, we'll have to stop the entire podcast if you yeah, did that. Totally. It's a major mistake. It's not like we edit. <laughs> no, yeah, dear God. That's yeah. work. Uh, <laughs> We're not here to do work. Um, and the, the grey shielded ones, uh, you've got the choice of whether you know, your opponent attacks the grey shielded one or just attacks you. Yeah. And sometimes, I remember a game with you where you just kept on beating beating at me and you eventually won because you wouldn't destroy my my stations no <laughs> no i just can't because and 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 there's two reasons to have the bases as well as having the bases just there for defense sometimes yep. because they're there to to always give you um points and stuff um when you every card or most cards mm-hmm. have a kind of they have their main secondary action ability, yeah. but then they have a secondary ability mm. And what a secondary ability does is on, it might be, the secondary ability might allow you to have more damage. The secondary ability might give you more life, the secondary ability. Mm -hmm. What it does is, and it doesn't have to be a base and a ship card. It can be two ship cards or it can be two base cards. It allows you to go ahead and stack up the damage, especially like on the yellow faction. Sometimes the draw card is... The secondary mm-hmm. is the secondary ability. Sometimes some even of the a, more expensive cards, the, yeah. the um, you know, make your opponent drop a card is yeah. the secondary ability. Yeah. So. Um, there's uh, the obviously the famous kind of things like the the kind of the mech world, um, which 
mm. says you can yep. you know it doesn't matter which which faction card you're playing yes, you're yeah. automatically going to unlock the the ability um mm. the I cannot straight and me and Colin will I mean, Colin will agree with me and I'm going to speak you know on behalf of my Colin and I that um this is a fantastic game it's good, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. n- it is a rabbit. It's what I guess it's a rabbit hole of a game, um, in terms that it's very very easy to get started and play it, and then especially if you've got the app. And I think this is maybe the first time that you and me probably would say, if you're pl- wanting to really get into this, hmm. getting the app is probably a really a really really good idea. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, I would go down that route. I think. The, for for me, um, it's the ability for me to be able to multiplayer side of things. Mm-hmm. It's not about bringing out a deck of cards and saying who wants to play. If somebody's got a phone, you've got a phone. I mean, um, I play play regularly with you. I mm-hmm. play a lot with the guys from the Staying In podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sam Turner, uh, Chris, and Peter. If he hasn't deleted, he's actually deleted the app from the phone because he says he was playing it so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, Pete, do you want a game? No, I've deleted it. I was putting too much money. <laughs> <laughs> he's just listened to his episode recently. He says, no, no. He says, he, 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 he's an enabler. He encourages people to get an app. <laughs> and then three weeks down the line, he'll disappear because he's like deleted it off, off his phone himself. But um, yeah, and then there's a um, friend of the show, uh, Graham, or Graham's. He plays a mean game. I'll have to mm-hmm. connect you two up together because he <laughs> just does a. Um, he plays a game. He he yeah. take yeah no oh yeah. He's very very good at what he does. He's very very good at what he does. Yeah. Um. But that is the one failing of the physical game. I think. Yeah. Is the the shuffling. Oh yeah. Because you know every single time you you go for your deck, you know that you've got to sit and shuffle it. Yeah. Which you know, if you're playing against a card shark, he's gonna make sure his his good characters are, yeah, his good cards are mysteriously gonna be at the top <laughs> exactly. again. Uh, hey, look, three aces. <laughs> but you've just discarded five yeah. aces in the last play. Um, it's, I can't, and, yeah. And the the basic mathematics of it, you know, when things are proxing, and then you're like, yeah. all right, is that that's fifteen damage I've done? Is yeah. Oh no, that 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 should have been eighteen damage. Yeah. And there's so sometimes you have to go back and say, but what we'll do is we'll next time we'll play the game we'll make sure that we include that kind of rule and you know that kind of count instead because it can be yeah. quite easy to miss out on stuff, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to like drawing cards. You've almost got to like kind of go along your row and check the first level of kind of damage and actions, and then go along and check mm-hmm. if anything that's linked up is damage and actions. Yep. And then you go, oh, I forgot, I've got the base here. The number of times I guess <laughs> you had the base there. And you forgot that you automatically were adding authority or you were adding mm. money and you had a choice over the two. That was the only thing I would say about the physical the physical mm. kind of game. The other thing about the app, I guess, is you also get access for a fee to play all of the expansions that are available on mm-hmm. it as well. So, um, Which is always very, very, well, very, you know, very good. That, that does bring into the cost, you know, the, the cost for the physical core set. Is um, it's about ten or twelve pound, isn't it? Is it um, is it worth it? I, well, I, I like that sort of deck building game. Yeah. So I played you know, it with cause... my son as well, and Jay, and he's like basically, if we're not playing um, if we're not playing anything else, then it's one of the games that he's coming back to, kind of like again and again and again. So I must say, in terms of a positive way. Of looking at it, he's kind of really, really, he's kind of really, really liking it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, it's it's thoroughly enjoyable. If you've ever played a game like uh, Dominion, then you'll yes. pick up Star Realms straight away because Star Realms is like a very simplified version of Dominion. But it's it's very very easy. To, it's easy to pick up, but yeah. it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. I am still at the point, I guess, where I think I am. Um, I think I'm still at the point where I'm learning. 
And yeah, you're definitely I... better than you were. Because <laughs> <laughs> what happens is, like, I'll, I'll play a game of Colin and then I'll win and I'll not hear anything. But if I lose, I'll get, oh, bad luck, old chap. You should maybe mix and match. It's like kind of competitive dad in the fashion. <laughs> let me tell you where you went wrong, kind of thing, which is always kind of good fun. Um, apart from that, you went, um, you went LARPing. I did go LARPing. How was that? It was good fun. It was. Sounds a bit weird when you say I was running around a forest hitting people with foam sticks, but. <laughs> Is it foam? Do you not get real swords? Uh, no, no, we don't have real swords. <laughs> Dear God. Why not? I can imagine that would add a bit more of a challenge. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I think it would yeah. be good fun. I'm non com It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Is it is it a case of running around and beating? Do you get people that cheat and pretend that they've not been injured, or uh-huh. is it a case that you just go around hitting folk and then they're dead? Well, it's it's an honor system, so all right, you know, it's it's like airsoft. All right, you know, the amount of people, you know, like if it's some tryhard and he's like, no, I'm not, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not going to take that hit. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you get some people that just roll in and they go in for the glory of battle, the last final kind of charge? Ah, I'm going to kill you all! Stab, stab, stab. Ah, and they want yeah. to die a good death, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Did you win? Well, it's like a role-playing game. There's, oh, there's, there's never on. an end. There's the never excuses. an end to it. The excuses. Here we go. Did you of win? Of course I won. Of course you won. You won against It's me everybody. and I enjoyed it, so <laughs> I must have won it. <laughs> you won against every single person on the battlefield. You well, went about like Rambo. So it's, the, the game has been going on for the last... Um, must be coming up for like 15, 20 years. Really? Yeah. That's phenomenal. And something, my group, yeah, that, that I go down with, we did something that changed the rules for the entire game, really? and they added it in. Really? Yeah, we invented um, gold weaponry, <laughs> and they that? actually added it into the oh, rule book. No. So it's, it's like cold iron, silver, you know, because like silver yeah. to kill va- uh, werewolves and yeah. things like that, and gold weaponry. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We've done it. We've succeeded. <laughs> yep. I can put that on my gravestone. It's all because I, I play this this silly pompous lord that wants to have more bling than anyone else. So I wanted a gold, gold sword. sword. <laughs> Do you realise that gold is no good as a weapon? Do you realise it's soft like no, butter? It's, it's soft like butter. It's worked, it's worked into the, the, the metals. So oh, right, fine. so it's fine. fine. So you it's can go and kill some. Or the alloy. foam. Was it gold foam? Did yeah, you spray? Did you gold? Did you spray paint it gold? Uh, I. I had a sword made for 120 quid. <laughs> <laughs> you had a what? Yeah. You had a sword made for it? Yeah. Well, that's it's fantastic. upstairs, so you can't really see it. Is it? Oh, you need it's to up let in me... the loft. So. Oh, it's in the loft. I can't yeah. get access to it. Oh, you need to let me see it so I can take a photo. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. This has to be, this has to be done. This has to be done. Um, <laughs> other games that we've been playing. Um, well, LARP, but LARPing sounds fun. Should I, I, was, I was asked about going and then I just thought, I'm going to have to sit down with my wife and explain. I'm going to about Just bring her along. run about the woods and hitting people. I actually think, and, and I genuinely mean this, that it is a brilliant holiday. Yeah. Because it's a holiday without these silly little mobile phones or computers or anything around you. And you're forced into having nothing but social interaction with everyone oh, around you. Oh, my goodness. And it is just... Absolute brilliant mental reset allows you to Absolutely have your only that. thoughts except your thoughts and get rid of you. Well, you, you're not playing you as well, so you're having a wee holiday from yourself. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. What are you it doing? Is. I'm having a little holiday from myself. This is like, you know, what I mean, you I've know, been a paradise. But I'm not I calling been with the mortgage and, and, yeah, and exactly. everything else, no. I'm playing this. This what character was your, what that was your Lord's name? What is his name? Oh, he's uh, Marcus Don Herrera. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put on an accent? He has this ridiculous <laughs> oh, accent, eh? <laughs> That's oh, that kid's a Brexit full circle. Was <laughs> mass movie side call us Ricardo and Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> Say Ricardo. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is fantastic! I, I, you know, I'm so glad we brought this up. <laughs> is there photographs of you in your armor? 
Uh, I don't think there's any photographs of me because oh. I didn't do very much that weekend apart from sit and get drunk. Oh so. my goodness. You're just like telling people what to do. You go fight him over there. So you uh, Pretty much, yeah. So you doing? Yeah. Did you always have the... Well, I'm the you, dawn of a noble house. Were you in the full <laughs> accent thing all the time then? Yep. Were you? Totally. You didn't <laughs> yep. break out of character. Oh. You're like Leonardo DiCaprio. Every, every now and then you break oh out. Oh my goodness. But, but you try and stay this in This is like a whole new light. We have to just do... We'll do another... We're going to do a whole podcast. Can't believe we've character. never talked about it. <laughs> I can't believe we've never talked about it either. This is absolutely ridiculous. So LARPing. <laughs> there will be a LARPing special. Mm, maybe. Well, I think, was it Trace? The last person I spoke to about LARPing was Tracy from Chaos mm-hmm. Cards. So get her back. Maybe ask her back on. Yeah, Hi, Tracy, if you're listening. I hope the shop's going <laughs> really well. Lots. I heard lots of lovely things about uh, the new Chaos Cards retail shop. It's all very good. Um, so. Other games that we didn't touch it on very quickly, I guess. Uh, played Viticulture with the kids. Yeah, it's a solid game. They loved it. They really, really liked it. The, did they take they it really, up? Yep, they played yeah. it. They really, really they liked the mechanics, and they thought, "Oh, this isn't spells and wizardry and killing people. It's the exciting world of making wine, children." Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, "Oh, can we have a glass?" No, you can't. But you can play this. It's mine. Grow your own. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I've also I played a bit more of the Dark Souls board game. Mm-hmm. I've been playing a bit of single player of that. No, I've played a wee bit of that. I don't know if I liked it or not. It's been very marmite because mm. I have I know that Jeremy Greer, who is continually, he's no longer the worst. Unfortunately, he turns out to actually be quite a nice guy. <laughs> um, he doesn't like it at all. Yeah. Whereas I know that Gordon at the club. Gordon loves it, but Gordon, Gordon loves, loves the, the, the computer game version. Yeah, he does. He loves it, and I think I think that helps him to embrace it. I, myself, have played quite a few solo games now. I find it as... Uh, I'm probably going into the wrong mindset when, when I sit down and play it, because I'm expecting a sort of dungeon crawling. Yes. And I'm expecting that, right, I'll move my character here, here, and here. Yes. And the game just is not designed around that at all. No, it's, it's no very design. simplistic when it comes to actual movement. Yes, it is. You know what I mean, um, and it's a case of you trying to get an advantage, and it's mi- it's mixing up being the first player, the the player with initiative, because yeah. that has a direct effect on how you get attacked and who attacks yes, you. Yeah. So it's very, very kind of interesting in that. I'm plodding along with it. I've not. I've not not enjoyed sitting down playing it. Yes. I just wouldn't be my first thing off the shelf. I said to David Carroll when I spoke to him in the interview that I said, I think it's a game you have to be in the mood for. Mm. I think you have to be ready to So you sit down with, with like someone like Gordon and you get enthusiastic because Gordon's enthusiastic. Gordon loves it. He's really, really enjoyed his time mm-hmm. with it. I yeah. think he's really, really looking forward to the next wave which is coming and out his, very soon. His his mates, um, you know, like John and yeah. Matt, they all, they all really. But then when he's changed, when he was teaching the rules, he's got to the stage where he, when he's teaching the rules, he, I, he, I don't even think he's, I don't think he's house ruling it, but he's got a way of explaining it that the mm-hmm. person kind of gets it straight away. Yeah, I think if you're moving this from a dungeon crawling perspective, from a normal dungeon crawler, mm. and you're expecting dungeon crawler. I think you're going to have a bit of a tough time trying well, to get your head I know he, Dark Souls. he was able to explain it to um, to to Noah and her sister. Yeah, and and they were able to pick the game up yeah. just like that. Yeah, it was really. And they yeah. seem to have fun playing it. So it's really cool. Um, other games worth to mention, I guess. Uh, Space Crusade got that to the table. Wow, is, is that re-released? No. no. Was it the original? <laughs> yes. Was I was uh, I fu- was I fulfilling a was I fulfilling a wish for Scott and Andy? Yes. yes. Did they really have an awful lot of fun? No. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, they did. They said they really liked it. Would they play again? No. Yeah, they probably would. They probably would, yeah. Milton Bradley, Space Crusade. 1992, mm. absolutely fantastic. It was lovely to get it back to the table. Simplistic miniatures. The amount of plastic you got in that thing was oh, immense. It was, it was almost like I was tempted to do that. And the best thing about Space Crusade is the <laughs> box. That kind of video, which I watched again. You've seen the Hero Quest one? 
No. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to show you after we record because okay, it is okay. absolute. It's a guy that says about the best things about Hero Quest, and he just goes, "The best thing about Hero Quest is the expansions." Except, forget the expansions. Just play more Hero Quest. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like about six. Co- he's got about six copies of Hero Quest. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll might even put the links in the show notes because it's absolutely fantastic, Paddy. Smith reminded me of it again the other day. So mm-hmm. I just had to stop there and then and just watch it because it's absolutely brilliant. Um, Mex versus Minions. Me and James played a big session of Mex vs. Mm-hmm. Minions. Did you go I... further into it? Then? Yes, we did. We even opened the box. Oh, excellent. You got that from I go, I opened the box. I'm not going to say what's in the box. Oh, and as I say, I joked on don't. the board game Geek or the Board Game Spotlight group on Facebook and put a video up of me opening up the box and inside there was, was not... Was never wasn't... box. <laughs> and it was just me opening up the box forever. Did did, did you splice it with... with um... I spliced it with something else and I'll let you see it because it was a, a... It was a... Was it Schlevin? <laughs> it was something like... What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> um, also been playing Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born. If you haven't played Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born, please play Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born. I don't like it. I don't care. There's an... <laughs> Ashes... No, I, I played it... Um... Played Andy it with Bill. Scott. Oh yeah, okay. Scott's got a copy of it. Oh, as has well. he? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's... The biggest, the biggest problem with Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born, hmm. and you know, and Colby, come and t- talk to me, mate. But the biggest problem with Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born was Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born not getting out to the distribution chain quick enough. It was hyped. It came out, and then after that, when people were looking for other characters to play. Mm-hmm. It just it didn't happen. It wasn't there. It wasn't uh-huh. there. There was disappointment. There was yeah. tears at the table. Um, so that's what we've been playing. Mm-hmm. It's been quite a lot. And you've been playing your Ripiga role playing game, mm-hmm. which is coming to an end. Maybe. Maybe. What do you mean? Yeah. I don't know. What? You got the enthusiasm back. You continue. It, it, it got all right again. Ah, oh, so. whoa. Just when I thought I was up, I just they dragged me right back. You were just like that. I've had enough. I've absolutely had enough of it. You can take your role playing game and your grease poof paper that you've drawn, and you can. F- and I thought you'd had enough. But you know, you're going to continue it now. Yeah, we'll we'll see how long this character lives for. If if he dies and and then I'm off, or I'm away, or if there's more huffy puffness happens. Oh, don't say that. There's no huffy puffness. Much huffy puffness. (laughs) A little bit of huffy puffness. Um, what are we going to get off the shelf for the next time? Because I have got a lot of stuff, but I was thinking one of the PAX games. (laughs) Oh my god! Yes. No, well, we did get PAX before. For Floriana, we did. Play twice. Yes, we did. What are we going to play next from the PAX range? £40 game played twice. I know, it's good. Ah. It's like a Chinese. Um, <laughs> what are we going to play? What PAX game are we playing? Um, well, I've got PAX Parma. Let's play that then. I think it's called Parma. We'll play it sometime. Which is all about um, Russia and Britain fighting over Afghanistan. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. I wonder what happened with that then. And um, the tribesmen won and kicked both nations out of <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> when you try and take a hard tank up a mountain, doesn't it work for you? And then Johnny Rambo turns up. No, well, you see, you you, you know, you send in two British officers. Yes. In their spiffy red coats. Yes. And, you know, and, and one what? of them will come back with his mate's head and, and <laughs> and it will be one of the best films ever made. <laughs> um, oh, the man who would be king! What a movie! That's what a, a movie! Is that Michael Caine? It's Michael Caine and Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. <laughs> <coughs> Can you do Michael Caine? That's that's no. You're bite. only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a load of rubbish. <laughs> get up and get away. <laughs> But that was when it's young Sean Connery, because young Sean Connery is he different from old Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Yes, so he's yeah. very, like, he's very speaking like this. What are you talking about? That's old Sean Connery. Young Sean Connery is lighter. 
and he's more clipped in the middle and the beginning and the end. <laughs> and Michael Kane, he just sounds like he's ready to go. Come on in, I'm going to take you on. Oh, Such a good film. Harry Palmer. Harry Palmer. What else are we going to get to the table? We are going to try and play Abyss. Abyss, yes. Okay, we'll go for Abyss. And we're going to try and play Formula D. Formula D. Formula D. Formula D. Which Formula is actually about D. racing cars. Which is actually about <laughs> racing cars. And it's not blankety blank at all. Um, Bloodborne is hanging over me. Bloodborne. I have tried it uh-huh. a little bit. What is it? I think I need to play more of it. It ah. is like Dark Souls. It's like the sister game. It's the card game, though. And what I would love to get to the shelf, yes, or get to, or get to the table even. Yes. Well, I wouldn't mind it on my shelf too. Yeah. Catacombs. Ooh, it's shipping. It's shipping. Ooh. If it's here, if it's, if it's here, we're just gonna play it. And we're just gonna do an entire another episode of catacombs because it deserves it. Because mm. it'll be catacombs and castles. Yeah. So we have to talk about catacombs it's a and castles. Completely different game. Yes, we do. It's a completely different game. Utterly, completely different game. Utterly, totally different game. Mm. Yes. So we'll be doing that, and then catacombs conquest will be appearing <laughs> a couple of months after that. So we'll have to be talking about that. Do you know what I mean? I saw the. I don't know about you, but I saw the email, but I got super excited about stickers and wooden pieces. Mm. Yes. Mm. Can't wait to play it. <laughs> can't wait to be shockingly bad at it and end up, you know what I mean it arrives on the end of October it's on the bonfire by the 5th of November <laughs> because I, I, I can I really need to buy a Subutio or something know, to, to get you to get into me. the mindset or Zooball, I've heard Zoo- a game called Zooball Zooball? Yeah, Duncan Malloy was mm-hmm. on talking about it on Gamewire with Bebo um, who Brittany, who's going to be she's, I think, uh, yeah um, and he was it's about Subutio it's almost like it is Subutio but it's mm-hmm. with little animals and it's little, little animal discs and we mm-hmm. need to have a look at it but it's out there it's Osprey Games mm-hmm. I think they were talking about yeah. it in the Stay podcast so I need to dig it out and have a have a look at it so yes yeah, totally. Catacombs is definitely coming off um, giving it a kick giving it a kick now, as we know I continually get people on to talk about Kickstarter mm-hmm but, however, as well as highlighting some things that potentially are going to be happening in the next couple of days, we should also be highlighting things which are potentially going to be happening at the end of this month into the beginning of next month because mm-hmm. those certain people are going to be coming on the show to talk about Ooh. them. So if we start off with the people that we've already spoken to who may or may not have episodes that have already been released to talk to us, mm-hmm. talking, I don't know how to finish that sentence, we had Carla from Weird Giraffe Games on to talk about Stellar Leap. Mm-hmm. And that is a fantastic episode because Carla is, she was a lot of fun. She was a lot of, she was <laughs> a lot of fun to have on the show. Um, so Stellar Leap is out on the 18th. That might have already passed by the time, well that is, yeah, that might already pass by the time this we actually get this aired. Because this is going to be weird because we're actually going to, travel this episode back in time so it appears in the feed as episode 100 which is the way it's going and taking over the rubbish message that was there before so that is Stella Leap which is on the 18th we also have a champion of the wild Mm -hmm. um, Tom Clare Mm -hmm. Um, he's going to be his episode is going to be out um, in the next couple of days, potentially tomorrow, to coincide with his Kickstarter campaign. And he is also a lovely chap. And Champions of the Wild is like, what would happen What would happen if a giraffe took part in, say, like the high jump? Or what happens if a giraffe well, took part... That would be part... awful. They're not very good at jumping. Well, what happens so... if a giraffe took part in the 100 metres? What happens if a giraffe then took part in, say, the javelin? Mm-hmm. And then it's, you know, you get, it's kind of like that. It's quite a socially party type ah, game. Okay. So it's a case mm-hmm. of, this is my animal, and this is the reason why I'm using it. So why would I use a gorilla for the short putt? It'd be fantastic. But then if I have to use, say, like the gorilla for the 100 meter swim, would he be as good? Mm. Probably not. We don't know if apes can swim. I'm pretty sure chimpanzees don't. I don't know if gorillas do. And so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like that. It's a fun game. It's not very... 
It's very social. It's a party game. Looks a lot of fun. So that episode will be out very, yeah. very soon. I was just checking Twitter there. Yes. Uh, Twitter says no. Oh. Girls don't swim. Oh, they don't. All right. Well, that's that's pretty good. Um, games that are coming to an end for people that we've had on. We've had Ed Jowett, who was on from Shades of Vengeance, to talk about Era Balam, which will be finishing very soon. And also... Now Boarding is also potentially finished by the time this episode comes out. The wonderful, fantastic Mr. Tim Fowers. But coming in October, um, we've got Mark McKinnon's Wreck and Ruin Mm -hmm. is finally coming out. And that is a kind of a Mad Max-esque kind of battling across the wastelands to try and... Dominate kind of areas and stuff like that. And you do like your apocalyptic future. I do like a bit of an apocalyptic future. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, um, there has already been a little bit of buzz around this game before yeah, it's sorry. taken off. I've seen, uh, I've seen um, Andy and Steve from Polyhedron Collider talk about it, uh-huh. and Andy says it's an insta back as far as he's concerned. Mm-hmm. They've already played it and said it's fantastic. But we will be having Mark on the show. Which is why we're mentioning it back now, because Mark is a lovely man. So he's coming back on to have a little bit of a chat about it. And secondly, he is the man, well, the man, the founder of Druid City Games, Mr. James Hudson, who was on before to talk about the delightful Grim Forest. He's Mm -hmm. coming back to talk about their next follow-up game, which is coming out again in October, called Guardian's Call which appears mm-hmm. to be a card game, but James is going to be giving us all the details. James is a wonderful man who's built up his own community on Facebook called yeah. the Board Game Spotlight. And yeah. in general, he just seems to be a top bloke. Mm-hmm. So those are kind of the Kickstarters that we're going to be kind of looking out for. If you want to find out more about those games, check out the episodes. They're all doing, you know, um, yeah, mm-hmm. certainly without checking. Um... We shall have a couple of shout outs. This is episode 100. Can you believe it? Yeah, I can. You, we, we have mentioned it. We have mentioned it, yes. <laughs> Hello, it's been going on. Um, but we do want to give a special shout out to, I guess, every guest that has come on and has helped us kind of make the show as big and <laughs> as <laughs> as many episodes. Not kind of big as in well known, as in big as is the number of episodes that we've mm-hmm, had. Because mm-hmm. everybody's been a joy to have on. Absolutely fantastic. Everybody. Every. Well, man. apart from that Richard guy. That's me. Oh, right. <laughs> but also, there's people that we should be giving a shout out to. Um, people that we think, if you like us, you should maybe give them a listen. Um. The Musicians Podcast, um, presenters Matt, um, it's a show where he interviews musicians and he's had folk like Newton Faulkner on. Um, he interviews, he gives a, he gets really personal and it's kind of lovely kind of life stories about people who are trying to make it in the music business, not your commercialised kind of guys of this world, but the guys that are just going out and gigging around Europe and how they deal with you know oh, right. family so, life and stuff like that. So it's your, not... your your Miley Cyruses and your... <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but it's a it's a really really good and interesting listen just to hear how much work yeah. a lot of these guys are putting in just to even get you know the slightest bit of a break. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Um, Blake Leaf, the getting geeky with Gamer Leaf. Me and Blake have been talking back and forward. He is in the Americas. Mm-hmm. And obviously we're over here, but he's just start. He's not too long starting out in his podcast, and he's doing a lot of interviews. He's doing a lot of chats. He gets his kids on, so it's a lot of good fun. It's like a. Um, he tries to release at least like two, three times a week. Ouch. Yeah, but he's just he's a lot of enthusiasm, mm-hmm. um, and it's just worthwhile checking out if you're looking for something different. The family stuffs. The family stuff's like adorable. He gets his like his his littlest kids on there, and it's just it's very very cute. So it's worth a listen. Um, have to give a big shout out to the staying in boys, not because they've kept me in Star Realms, um, but also because they've generally been nice chaps. So that's Chris, Sam, Peter, and Dan. 
and Dan. Never forget Dan. Well, we're gonna have to forget Dan because Dan is um, Dan's uh, Mrs. is due, so their first child. So I think oh. the last episode was potentially gonna be his last episode for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. life changing. Yeah. So best of luck to you, Dan. Welcome you to know. high pitch squealing and, and, and it's not bad. The whole load of nappies. It's not bad. It's not bad. You just go down the pub for when the labour happens exactly. and then turn up with cigars and say, "Look what I did." Way. That's how it works. Um, He's there for the important bit. A <laughs> um, couple of shout outs. Michael May, who can play that game. He's on YouTube. He's a lovely guy. He does some work, fabulous work. He's just worthwhile supporting. He's con- consistently just he just is creating some really great stuff. The Broken Meeple, Meeple Luke Hector. Mm-hmm. Again, the boy's gone from podcast to doing videos, and he's doing videos and podcasts, and he's just done his top 100 games. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, you Basil's going to sue him. I don't know. Maybe Basil's going to sue him. You can ask him. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask Tom Basil when he gets on the show. Um, <laughs> I know. I wouldn't say anything. Um, and I guess on a sad note, um, the Mr. Trevor... And Mr. Gary from Mass Movie Side UK are hanging up their podcasting spurs after mm. two hundred and fifty odd episodes. Ouch! Um, because of life changes, which meant that the podcast can't mm-hmm. continue. For those that haven't heard, Mass Movie Side UK is a podcast where they take a film and they basically talk about it. They've done recently mm-hmm. the Fast and Furious season. They are horrifically bad people because every week they decide to take a. Tw- they decide to give us a shout out on the show Wait. and then <laughs> use it as an excuse to rib us by oh. rolling a 20 sided dice <laughs> and deciding whether to give us a nice shout out or give us a horrible one, questioning our ability to speak to the ladies. And, and there's a 1 in 20 chance that it's the good one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So, yeah, so best of luck to Gary and Trevor and, uh, and to, to their endeavours. They're not obviously disappearing together. That um, they're going to go kind of like different ways. Right. Um, just a couple more. Monster Dear Monster, Cameron, Matt, and Dave. Monster of the Week, Chris, Jeremy, who cover the Supernatural podcast. Monster Dear Monster is all about different monsters from different video games, films. So they do like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. They've done like the Bloodborne series of video games. It's very, very interesting. Got a shout out to my boys, Paddy and CJ from Twin Humanities. Um, Paul and Joseph from the CNC Geek cast, two guys, and I've said this before, they cover films and both of them have got speech impediments. And that's their gimmick, and it's just it's just a really, really good show. Short, cool. snappy, twenty five minutes, half an hour show. They pick a if show. only we could do that. I know. Oh, <laughs> if only we could do that. <laughs> and last but not least, a big quest for magic and steel. David and Mara and the gang are keep on going doing their D and D. Excellent. Are you um, still having fun? Yeah, they are. Excellent. It's a good cast. It's yeah. kinda of like a family thing. And they kinda of really kinda of found their what they're doing and how they're doing it. And it sounds it's a lot it's a lot of fun with what they're doing. Right. Questions. Well, if you liked it, you should have put a ring on it. Hey. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> right, okay. Tonight on dad jokes. <laughs> Tonight on dad jokes. A guy, a guy at work. Uh, he went away for uh, um... a dad joke. They put no, him away he for went. It? No, Dear God. a guy at work. He went away on holiday and he decided to turn up with his joke book from two thousand and four, and it's different sections. And you think two thousand and four? How bad could it be? But it's got sections, it's got an entire section titled Ethnic Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I'll just put that back in his. Oh, it was a simpler, that, gentler. Put that, it was, uh, yeah, it was only 10 years ago. I, was I know, dear God. You know, it's just like that. What? Questions, okay. Well, Nick Jones has decided to ask us all of the questions. All of them. Um, 42. There I we go. Said, I've got the answer. I, I asked what questions. It says, tonight Colin is back and we record the full 100th episode. For real <laughs> this time. What questions do you lovely people have for us? 
And Nick has... Oh my goodness. What you been up to, he says. What have you been up to? Not me. What have you been up what to? What have I been up to? We've I... just said what he's been up to. Faffing about. <laughs> Pretty much. Enjoying life. Not having to sit in front of me with a flipping mic in his face asking him what he's been up to. Did you miss everybody on the internet? I did. I no, missed we... everyone. No, he didn't. Uh, what's your favourite movie? Especially mood? Twitter. <laughs> you don't even look at us. What's your favourite movie? Ooh. Um, it used to be Leon when I was younger. Yes. But now it, it changes so fast. What did you what did you like recently? Oh, was... what did I like recently? Um, Guardians of the Galaxy really hit it on the nail for me. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. No, Volume One really yeah. hit it on the nail for yeah. me. Um, don't know what it was about that film. It really clicked. But there's been loads of great films over the years. I, I'm I'm someone that changes their mind an awful lot. So. So there you go. So the answer to that question is Guardians of the Galaxy at the moment could be changing. Probably next week. Probably next week as little as that. Oh man. Oh no. Just, oh, no. Getting all these movies flooding into my head. So, so there you go. Well, we'll keep bullet it Bullet Monsters. Oh, oh, what a film. Fantastic. I was watching Pacific Rim the other day. Mm-hmm. Pleasantly just enjoying it. But just the going, way to do a, it. <laughs> it's just a good film. I was like really, really liking it. I've started collecting the Studio Ghibli movies. Oh, so I've got so far. I've got. Um, I've got now, my. It took me years to track down this film. There yeah. was a film when I was a little kid. I woke up, uh-huh. and it was like, I don't know, five a.m. in the morning. Yeah, and I went through and I sat down in front of the TV and I saw two movies that night. Yeah, that that just completely shaped what I loved as a little kid. And one of them, it turned out to be uh, Laputa. Oh, sick. oh Castle, Castle in the, in the Sky. Sky. What a film. That's next on the list. I'm oh, man, I agree every time month, I watch that. One it's just, oh. a month. <laughs> just going to get them one a month. So I've got, um, I got um, My Neighbor Totoro. Oh. Yeah, I got Spirited Away. Yep. And what was the other one? Oh, what was the other one I got? Oh, my goodness. What was the other one I got that I really, really liked? Um, Ponyo. Ponyo. Just, yep. Just amazing films. Don't don't watch Princess Princess Monoko. Yeah, that's just heart friending. There's no point watching. Apparently, it. F- um, the Fireflies one. No, is, don't watch that one either. Is absolutely, kind of like buckets of tears coming at your eyes. So it's there you go. Kids surviving a nuke. Oh, what? That, oh yes. no! I'm getting I'm getting <laughs> Raymond Briggs when the wind blows. <laughs> oh God, no, no. <laughs> Oh, let's just watch Watership Down. Screw it. <laughs> Her life's over. Bright eyes burning <laughs> like fire. Five have found it, Hazel. Um, Stuart Cullen, Fury AC, friend of the show, does his bit in the Scottish Sun. Yeah. Put us in there, which I figured it was over a year ago now that we were in the Scottish Sun. Do you know that? Yeah. Yay. In a little, little down ad section. He was lovely. For those heading to EGX this week, what cardboard should we try and play? Here's the link. Oh, Ooh. oh! So here, let's Ooh. let's have a look at this list from Mr. Stuart Cullen. He has said the following tabletop games will be available to play during EGX. Demonstrators from the S Devium, Carcassonne, Cold Names, Cope Express, Dead of Winter, Dice Forge, Double Cortex, Timeline, Story Cubes, Galaxy Trucker, Legendary, Five Five, Pandemic, Secret, Small World, The Captain is Dead, and Ticket to Ride. Well, I'm going to jump in and say get on The Captain is Dead if you fancy being spanked up and down the spaceship mm-hmm. because it's fantastic. I'm also going to say Dice Forge, Dead of Winter. Um, I think... I'm going to say you want nice, easy, sit-down, friendly games. Yes. So what would then you do? Then you want Carcassonne. Yes. You want Ticket to Ride. You want Captain is Dead. Yes. Uh, small small World as well. Small really world. nice, easy, sit very, down, very play very games. Good. You want something more deep and interesting, then you want... Uh, you definitely want um, Dead of Winter, or you want Legendary Firefly. Depends how long you're going for. If you're going for a couple of hours, yeah. if you're going for an entire day... Dead. Then Dead of Winter would be pretty good if you really fancy getting into it. If you're there going to be there for like a couple of hours and you fancy a quick shot or something, mm. even um, Code Names, 
dice forge isn't that oh, long. It's to demonstrations play. as well, so you've got someone that knows the someone rules. Someone that knows the rules, which is nothing better. No, you're actually doing that wrong. Oh, I've been doing that wrong all my life. There's nothing worse than that. There's nothing worse than that than oh, finding I, out a I game. tried to play um, Game of Thrones board game. Yeah. At the LAN party I had a couple yeah. of days ago. Tried to sit down and play that, and it was like, I cannot remember the rules. It's and worse. And it, uh, it's worse. But hopefully this is going to be remedied when... But it's a good um, game, because it won. So. Oh, <laughs> that's what I forgot to say. Yeah, rules. Uh, Dized. Mike Barnes that was on to talk about Dies, which is the mm-hmm. digital app that helps you learn rules. Ah. It got funded after they appeared on the show. Excellent. Now, I'm not saying that that was directly well, due to us, but I am. Because it wasn't directly due to us. Directly due to you, due the to listener. you, the listener, kind of going ahead and, and looking at backing it. Oh, Nick just keeps on going. He oh, says we broke the four walls. Does Colin listen to podcasts? No, not really. Uh, no. No. Yes. Right. Okay. A list of political ones, which I shouldn't, because I get okay upset. Also, can oh Stuart says congratulations on the hundredth episode. Thank you very much, Stuart. That's very very kind of you. Um, is Colin aware there is a wolf named after him? <laughs> um, I think he is. Oh, I don't. no, he's not aware that there's a wolf named after him. Okay, in the Dungeons and Dragons game that I take uh-huh. part with, I adopted the wolf, and because. Nick was like going on about and keeps on going on about how often you appear in the show. <laughs> I named this stunning wolf after you. Oh, so excellent. I've always got a Colin going about with me on our adventures. <laughs> We've also now got an owl bear called Gladys. Oh, you got an owl bear? I got nice. an owl. I, used, nice. I rolled a 19 on animal husbandry with advantage, and I've now got entire control over an owl bear. They're, they're, they're quite. They're quite. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's quite brilliant. Um, Nick just goes on. Is there a particular popular game that Colin has never played? Lots of them. Tons. Where do you want to start? I've never played Galaxy Trucker. No, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Or Robot Rally. No. What else? It's just that, there's, I mean, there's games coming out every month that I could say I haven't played. But really popular ones. Zombie Side? Never touched the Zombie never. Side. Never no. touched the zombie side. Yeah. Haven't played Settlers of Catan. Oh, I have. Have you? I haven't yeah. touched it. I played the digital version and that was enough. Go wood. George, you are no TCP. Um, is that enough questions? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait, what does Colin think of the Richard is definitely a wizard episode? Um... <laughs> Nick, you're banned for life from ever getting involved in this show ever again. And okay, here's another question: John Cage from Polyhedron Collider, John and Steve and Andy, the top gear of board game podcasts. They've asked a question. You should give them a listen because they're all good fun. Steve was on quite recently. Um, for those who have a relatively new listen relatively infrequently, what is Colin's top three games? You're getting all the questions. You're getting all the questions. All the what questions. Because yeah. people are sick to death of listening to the sound oh, of my voice. That's why. Say that, right? It's bloody true. <clears throat> so, What's your top three games? Pixel Tactics. Pixel Tactics. Catacombs. Catacombs. That's like the zombie apocalypse question. It is. What do I put in as number three? What do you put in as number three? What do I take out to put in? What do you put in? I'm just trying to think. Not Pax Perforiana. Or would you have enough of that? I've only played it a couple Command times. and Colours, man. Command and Colours has got to be there. there you yeah, go. there we three. go. Free. Done. Whew, we did it. <laughs> Easy. <Boom. laughs> if you could listen to only one pad- podcast for the rest of your days, who would it be? Oh my goodness, that's an incredibly difficult thing to do. I don't know. If I could listen war, to it's... one <laughs> podcast for the rest of your days, which would it be? Um, John, I must admit that one a show I would always listen to, no matter what happened, would be the Staying In podcast. John's not on the Staying In podcast. He's on Polyhedric Collider. Oh. It's a joke. <laughs> Thick burn. Bants. No, of course I would listen to the Polyhedron Collider thing forever. Um, yep. <laughs> 
if it just seems like a terrifying cycle of it these poor people like a, have to keep on doing like the show day in day out. A desperate and, attempt to ask us to plug his show. If you could rid the gaming world of one game for each decade of podcasts you've made, which would you choose? So does that mean he wants us to rid the world of ten games? Uh, Monopoly. He... Uh, Monopoly really? Glasgow. Really? Monopoly Star Wars. Monopoly Star Trek. Monopoly any version of Monopoly. That's a bit ten. <laughs> rid the gaming world of one game, Magic the Gathering. You don't like magic, do I you? I just you think know. it's overrated. <laughs> what? It's just rubbish. They've got to the point where they're so desperate they've got to keep on putting out new versions every three months to stop people getting bored. <gasps> no, that's not true. That's I can't think of a game I'd want to get rid of. Um, Monopoly. <clears throat> probably Monopoly. One of us. One yeah, of us. I think... No... One game. Well, that's a lot of different games. I can't remember. Is there a game I would want to get rid of? Berserker. Oh my god, I hate that game. Do you know what they are, one? Kingdom Builder. I hate that game oh, as well. Kingdom Builder's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember playing Kingdom Builder and going, when is this going to end? Do you yeah. know what it's like? Do you know I had a better experience when I got both my toenails removed? <laughs> oh, such a bad... Fe- well... It's not, it's incredibly dull. The rules weren't explained to me very well, and that's no, probably I remember the rules hindered me, qu- me. Qu- quite quite yeah. badly for, for enjoying oh, the game. Oh, you need to do this. Well, why do I need to do that? Because I explained it to you. No, you didn't. You explained <laughs> 10% of the rules, and you left the rest <laughs> of the rules to yourself. Quartermaster General, that 1914 one. I don't hate it. It's I, just not... It's just rubbish. It's just broken. In terms of the mechanics, mm. it was. I didn't like it at all. You didn't like it at all? No, I just kind of like, I went, what, what? I wouldn't get rid of it, but... It's not a Room 101. I mean, I'm not... Well, I suppose, get the rid of the game world, just to <laughs> stick it in there and get rid of it. I just try to think, what else? I can't think of anything else. This is like one of these things... Because I only want to play games that I actually enjoy. There's very few little games I kind of sat down and went, this is actually, I've just wasted... <laughs> My entire <laughs> evening, kind of doing this. Yep. I didn't enjoy Rex, but I don't know if that was what happened at the time. I think that was a the group, and b the game is mm. is very backstabby. It's very, very, so. very. Yeah, yeah. Um, Glad I convinced you to buy that, and I didn't get it myself. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and John's final question is: What's your favourite thing about Talisman? The game. I think the best thing about Talisman... What's their favourite thing? ...is just after you or someone else defeats the final thing and the game's over. Ah. I like the fact that I can use um, Talisman to prop up several other (laughs) games. I I can put Talisman on the bottom of the pile of other board games that I have so it doesn't... It's the only one that gets crushed. I think the best thing about Dolls Man is the Space Marine. <laughs> if you get the Space Marine, it's a great game. <laughs> is there a Spaz Yeah. Oh my goodness. You randomly get a Space Marine. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, it comes from back when GW, like oh. Fantasy and, and 40k were all, was meant to be the one universe. Do you know what? I think my favourite, the best thing about Talisman is the fact that they're remaking Talisman and they're giving a new edition. That's the best thing, is that it's going to be in more people's hands at an affordable price. That's the best thing about it. John is daft about Talisman. Oh, he he enjoys it. He loves Talisman. He's totally daft about it. You can hear him talk and talk about Talisman on Polyhedron Collider when they eventually kind of let him on. So that's it, really. I think no, it's it's a game of its era, you know. I think it's if, very, you know, very early GW because it's all completely luck based. So there you go. I think that um, it managed to bring a lot of gamers on and keep them in the hobby. Yeah, or, or introduce well. them to the hobby as well, you know, because the, the amount of people that came to board game from something like Talisman. <clears throat> That's what you want. Or Monopoly. And then find uh, better games. Woo! <laughs> Monopoly. Monopoly. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's 
I think this is episode 100. Nothing special. No. Well, it was, because it was you and me bringing it back on for another episode. And what's going to be happening from now on, now I'm going to put this on the tape, is that... Just like we'd definitely be on in a fortnight. Definitely. Third week of the month, every Sunday, third week of the month, there's going to be an episode with... He's with Mr. Colin and with me from now on. Regardless okay. of if we played anything or not, we're just going to come on and talk. You put a, these rules down. It's a bold claim. You know I don't play by your rules. <laughs> it's a, it's a bold claim. I'm a role blaker. I'm a role blaker. I'm a heart blaker. <laughs> but um, I guess it is time to. It's it's time to to disperse. Mm-hmm. So um, there's only a couple of things left to do, and I guess the thing is, is well, is if you have listened tonight, and if you have liked what you've heard, then first of all, go out and tell other people, which is always nice. Um, if you'd like to keep a track on what we're doing, try and tell people in the sort of manner of, um, you know, like an old black and white movie. You know, run down you. Hello, Mr. Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this here? We're not wizards. I, I, I don't know why I went Irish, but... <laughs> <laughs> I just went Irish, I know. <laughs> Have you heard about this this here wizards show? Because it's really good about the, about the cardboard. And you know, whenever you hear a bell ring, <laughs> oh. we're not wizards. Get wings. No, oh, it's so good. <laughs> um... But if you do want to keep an eye on what we're doing, then uh, if you go on Twitter, you can follow us on We're Not Wizards. If you go on Facebook, you can find us on We're Not Wizards. If you go to Instagram, you can find us on We're Not Wizards. If you go to YouTube, because our lovely Podbean, Podbean hosts who host their podcast, mm-hmm. what they do is they automatically throw our episodes up on um, YouTube oh. for everybody to enjoy, which is always nice very, that is very, very nice of them. Um, you can find us on all the normal podcast places, hmm. like Spreaker and Stitcher and Acast and Podknife. And if you are, if we're not turning up on your normal podcast listening place, then let us know, and we shall try and get it on the local podcast listening place, so you mm. have a place to listen to when you do the podcast listening. Yes, absolutely. If you like what you've listened to tonight and you decide that you want to not just kind of listen to us yourselves, but you want to tell other people about how you listen to us, if you go to Apple Podcasts and you maybe want to give us a review or you want to give us a rating. Well, that would be nice. That would be nice. Remember, if you do give us a rating and a review, don't give us a 10. Two fives. Don't give us two. Don't give us a 10 because that will make us big-headed. But don't give us a... No, Two. No, one. Okay. Because that'll make us cry. That will. Give us a five. You know, something in the middle. <laughs> distinctly average. Distinctly average. Because we are distinctly <laughs> average. Um, And this, you know, I usually like go, and but the person who has not been distinctly average, but I'm going to say is that the people that have not been distinctly average is both of us. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Well, we've been more. below. <laughs> because we've been below average for some time. And we're trying our best. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with us, um, I guess this is a shout out for everybody who's thinking about doing some kind of campaign or anything from about November, December onwards. If you're listening and going, yes, but they do have well known people on all the time. Are they going to welcome us with open arms? And the fact of the matter is, yes, we are. We are always open to having people on the show. So give us a shout. Send us an email, magic at we're not wizards.com or dot co dot uk. Yes, you nailed it. There's only two more things to do. What's that? Well, the first thing is to remember that we are many things, but we're not wizards, Mr. Christian. <laughs> are we wizards? <laughs> Call it. I, I don't think we are. We are definitely, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing is to say goodbye. So, oh it is. No. A... Oh dear God. <laughs> what? So, it is goodbye 
from the rather wonderful, the rather fantastic, the rather amazing Mr. Collins. Say goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Or I'll hang you from the yard arm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a goodbye for me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Is it safe? Is it secret? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't you dare do that. Not on the 100th episode. Don't ruin it for everybody. That's pain, but how dare you, sir. But remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Join us for the next 100 episodes unless we get bored and decide to do something else. Yeah. Movie reviews. Because <laughs> there's nobody doing that. I've checked <laughs> iTunes. Nothing. That's another it's place that does nothing at all. I must stop using my computer in offline mode. I'm going to have a little drink. And then we have to say goodbye. But it's tradition because it's a hundred uh-huh. episode. We're going to do the goodbye song. Okay. So say goodbye, Colin. Goodbye, Colin. Goodbye, it's been a hundred shows. Goodbye, do I cry? He makes eye contact all the way through this, it's quite disturbing. <laughs> hundred shows, goodbye, say goodbye, Colin. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>